<laughs> I'm getting that, but not a ready order. Yeah, take us out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Theaterbot San Diego. Today, Legion M and Theaterbot San Diego are proud to honor William Shatner with this Anna Footprint ceremony in the esteemed tradition of the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood. The time-honored tradition of placing handprints in the cement began 95 years ago when silent film star Norma Talmadge accidentally stepped in wet cement in the courtyard of the theater. It has gone on to become the longest-running awards tradition in Hollywood, honoring more than 300 actors, directors, and producers. This morning, we are thrilled to celebrate the announced documentary produced by Legion M about Mr. Shatner and his career by immortalizing in wet cement right here at Theater Box San Diego. To get things started, please welcome the co-founder and CEO of Legion M, Paul Scanlon. Again, um, I'm Paul Scanlon, I'm uh, co-founder and CEO of Legion M, and I couldn't be more proud to be here. Um, for those that don't know, Legion M, we're the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. What that means is we're literally, we're literally owned <laughs> by entertainment fans. And, you know, we have a fast-growing, vibrant, engaged community that guide us and support us, and we're so grateful to them. We have over 150,000 people in our community. We have over 35,000 investors. Uh, we're so grateful for uh, Bill Shatner, William Shatner, to join our advisory board um, and to be doing this documentary with, uh, with Bill. And what better way to kick off Comic Con 2022 by a historic moment where we will immortalize William Shatner and Cement. So without further ado, I am going to uh, introduce actor and comedian Stephen Lickman, and he's our master of ceremonies. Thank you for coming today. Good morning, San Diego! Today we are gathered to honor an icon, a legend, and recently a real-life astronaut. Welcome to the Theater Box Handprint Ceremony for the one and only William Shatner. <laughs> My name is Stephen Kramer Glickman, and I am honored to be emceeing this incredible event. Bill Shatner, I call him Bill, we are best friends. Uh, no, they call me William. William. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can stick with this for Shatner. Wow, wow, wow. Came off to a great start. You know, Bill, we, uh, Mr. Shatner, we are actually very similar, you and I. Uh, we are uh, both actors. You, of course, have two primetime Emmy Awards. Yay. I have Half a Kid's Choice Award. Oh. That's still something. That means you can call me Billy. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, we are both uh, Canadian uh, Jewish men from uh, Code St. Luke. That is also true. I am also Cavendish Mall. You better believe it. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love uh, Montreal. Um, uh, it is uh, it's it's an honor to uh, to be here to be doing this. Uh, we have a, uh, a a wonderful wonderful round of people to be bringing up uh, to you today. So before we bring up the Denny Crane to the stage, we have some very special guests. Our first guest is one of the greatest film critics in history, having been on Entertainment Tonight for 30 years. He is also the man who once got into a knife fight with Gene Shallots. <laughs> Please welcome my dear friend and the co-host of Malton on Movies, my dear wonderful friend Leonard Malton, everybody! Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Shallots. Good morning, uh, Hi, everybody. This is cool. This is the definition of cool. 
Now, we all know Mr. Shatner is a Broadway star, a Shakespearean performer, an equestrian, an author, a recording artist, an astronaut, among many, many other credentials. But I want to just take a moment to tell you about two experiences I had listening to him and watching him in a medium that nobody's ever talked about anymore, radio. Mm. He performed with Sean Astin and a wonderful supporting cast in a production of Ray Bradbury's Leviathan 99 under the direction of radio's greatest dramatist, Norman Corwin. And yes, it's available. Look online and find it. It's really good. And then back in 1997, Mark and Brian, used to be the morning guys on KLOS Radio, produced a recreation of Orson Welles' notorious War of the Worlds broadcast based on the H.G. Wells story. Who did star? William Shatner. I had a bit part as a radio announcer. I wasn't very good. He was great. And there is an art, a technique to radio acting. It doesn't just happen. Not every actor is automatically good acting without being able to use their face, without being able to use body language and gestures. He acquired that art. And if you don't believe me, look on YouTube, you can find that performance. It just says William Shatner is the complete actor. He can do anything. And anything he puts his mind to. <laughs> Whatever he does, you know he's going to do it well. And that's why we love him, and we remember him, and we want to honor him today. And I'm very, very pleased to have gotten to say a few words. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Another applause for Leonard Malton, everyone. the mantle of Captain Kirk is something that holds a great deal of responsibility. Our next guest currently plays Captain James T. Kirk on Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Please welcome to the stage the only actor that should be starring in T.J. Hooker the early years, <laughs> Paul Wesley! <laughs> Hi, everyone. All right, so, I'll start this off. How do you replace a legend? Well, you don't. It's simply not possible. Why would you try? Instead, you promise to safeguard the legacy entrusted to you. And then you go out and you do the work. You find some way to make a role your own while honoring the history that it carries. Precious few roles in television and film present such a daunting challenge. But one of them is certainly Star Trek's James T. Kirk. This character's place in entertainment history is indelible. It's a fixed moment in our collective memories. No matter where you go, no matter where you are, an image of Captain Kirk brings instant recognition. And why is that? Because for nearly 60 years, that role has been personified by a man of equally renowned stature, Mr. William Shatner. Attempting to recreate an iconic screen role is a tall order. You're following in the footsteps of gifted actors who blaze the trail you now walk. But to simply tread where they've already been does no justice to the role or those who inhabited it before you. Actors who took the words written on the page and embodied them with everything they possess as artists. You're expected to do nothing less. And in fact, you're expected to bring something more, something previously unseen, and perhaps something unexpected, while at the same time paying homage to those from whom you've taken the mantle. Now that is a tough gig on any normal day, but for a day on Star Trek, where you've been asked to take on the role of Captain Kirk, it is both, both the challenge and the opportunity of a lifetime. And I can't imagine taking on such a character and everything it means to the countless fans without having the support of the man who first brought him to life. Well, thankfully, Bill, or Mr. Shatner, or the original captain himself, went out of his way to make a newcomer like me feel welcome, and for that, I will forever feel grateful. So without further ado, 
Mr. Shatner, you have the con. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Oh, that's so sweet. He drove all the way down there to do this, uh, to be part of this, and I, I really am uh, totally grateful. Paul was my neighbor. So I, I, I didn't know that, and uh, we lived in the same hills in San Fernando Valley, and I got a phone call one morning, and uh, I answered, this is your neighbor, Paul was I said, well, well, I got a neighbor, but I just moved in, and there's uh, airplanes. They're flying overhead, there's a lot of noise here. And I said, well, the Burbank Airport's over there, Paul. He said, I know, but there's a lot of noise, and I thought I was going to be alone. True story. True story. So, I, okay, I mean, well, I can't stop the airplane. And one every three hours goes over if the wind is in the wrong direction, otherwise they fly, you can't hear it. So, he moves to another place, another canyon. And uh, so I was boarding, I saw him, I said, hi, hi, how's it, I left the place. I said, but where you're living, is not that near Van Nuys Airport? He said, yeah, they fly over all the time. <laughs> he had moved very far. I want to uh, thank you gentlemen for being here as well. It's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a ceremony. Put your hands on some I, I was up near San Francisco the last two days competing in a, a horse show. And uh, so a lot of salty foods, a lot of water. My hands are swollen. So I'm really afraid when I put my hands on the cement, it'll stick and I'll be like in a kneeling position for the rest of my life. Is that possible? It's not probably. Thank you all for being here, especially you. This is a whole new venture for Legion N. A uh, wonderful company you should uh, look uh, at it and examine the facts. It's really a, an unusual company. And I'm so proud and happy to be with it and this documentary we're making. And this ceremony this morning is really wonderful and I'm looking forward to it. My hands, do I, do I put my face in it a little bit? Thank you all for being here. It's such a pleasure. Look up one time. Look up one time. Look up one time. Now then, I didn't even leave it up for a shack. I put William there, and then Shaq your Peter's out, and that's destroying my life. Should we? Do you want to sign it again? I want to sign it again. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. That was it. We can scoop right out over here. Thank you. There you go. Where's the guy? Yeah, just look at that. Can we turn it around? Well, that's where your hand prints are going to go. Right. Well, Jose is coming. Jose is coming. So, while Jose is coming, <laughs> this radio show that we did all those years ago with this great uh, uh, poet and playwright, uh, Norman Corwin. It was being shot. Thank you. <laughs> um, he so gave us any ticket. And that's the story of life. <laughs> <laughs> you're obliterated at the moment you're done. <laughs> okay. That story will never be told. <laughs> Try looking up one time. Straight ahead, looking up. There we go. Right over here. Straight ahead. <laughs> one more time, Mr. Let me get the. Okay. Oh, up there, right? So, just briefly, PBS was shooting what radio was like in the 40s, and we were in the 70s or 80s, but it was never whatever it was. 
all the radio people who now uh, ha hadn't worked for 20 years, and I had been as a kid in radio in, in uh, Canada, were accustomed to reading a script and, 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 uh, and using your voice on the microphone here. So we're sitting around a table, and PBS has all their cameras on them, and they start shooting this great director, Norman Cole, the writer, this director. Well, I tell a little faster, a little smaller, okay, whatever. Well, well. And and we do, it, and they're shooting, and then they, they have to uh, stop every 11 minutes to read uh, film, to put the uh, uh, new film in, put the new film in, another 11 minutes. By 20, by two or three times, they had enough, and they leave. But the radio actors didn't want to leave. So Norman continued to direct. Now, Norman Fuller was one of the great directors for radio. He had the CBS Philharmonic over here, 70, 80 pieces, and he'd throw them a music cue, and this swelling music would happen, and then he'd throw the, the, the sound guy, and he'd make the sound of horse or whatever it was, and then they'd throw a cue to the actors, the actor would throw and the sound of the and it was glorious. None of that was happening. This was an empty studio. But Norman and the rest of the radio actors were living in this lost world. So PBS had gone, and we continued to perform, and somehow, three o'clock in the afternoon seemed to be our radio broadcast. I don't know where that came from. We're in an empty studio. The mics have been used in 20 years. The cables leave nowhere. And I know. <laughs> and, and we're acting like we're going on the air. PBS have long left, and that was like nostalgia. We're doing a non-existing radio show. It was very lovely. I'm glad you all were impressed by this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 we got that. Let me know if there's too much pressure, but you There's a great deal of pressure on it. Uh, yeah. As you do this, just look up every once in a while, and you're going to keep your hands in the cement. I'm going to keep my hands in the cement. <laughs> Until I go ahead and Until use it. Until you give me the signal. <laughs> give us a few <laughs> shots of that. <laughs> when you do that, you're yeah, going to do like this. I look left to right, right, right. Show it to me again. Get a picture of it. Left to right, go. Show me how to do that. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me when. Bill, look up, look up, Bill. Look up, look up, look up. Straight, straight down the middle. Right down the middle. You know, you gotta sit. Right down the middle. Right there, Bill. Now what? Now go ahead and wave the wall. 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 Right here, Bill. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa. Right, throw it in the towel. In the center, Bill. Don't touch your face. <laughs> There's one more thing. One more thing, indeed. The what? The date. Okay. Are you asking? <laughs> nice. I know, I know. Is that right? He's saying that uh, I have my imprint in the, in the Chinese theater in uh, Hollywood Boulevard. I don't think it is. All right, so this is, we're cementing yeah. the relationship. Yeah. Uh, and what, uh, and it's the day. what's the date? The, the date, date is 7-21. 21. 22. Bill. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'm on this side. Okay. In the light. Scoop, 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 scoop. Move on. Oh, I'm on. And together, guys. In the center. Paul. Looking right down the middle one time. There we go. All right. All right. Can we get one two shot? Oh, yeah. Paul, one two shot. You and Paul. Hey, everybody, one shot. Can I have a sticky stick later? Yeah. Paul, one shot. 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 Paul, one shot.
Ball, let's go. There it is, together. There it is, gentlemen. Guys, do the All the cosplayers, stay in the room. We're going to get a picture with you. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Turn around. 